from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Wednesday, August the 16th, 2017. Israeli security forces today demolished the home of the Palestinian terrorist who murdered three Israelis, members of the same family, in the West Bank Jewish settlement of Chalamish last month. On Friday, July the 21st, if you recall, 19-year-old Omar al-Abed infiltrated the settlement and stabbed to death Yossi Salomon and his two adult children, Elad and Chaya. Today, Israeli army troops, along with border police, entered the West Bank village of Kobar and demolished the bottom floor of an apartment building belonging to Alabed's family. Israel uses home demolitions of terrorists as a deterrent for terror attacks. Israel police also arrested family members of Alabed, charging that they knew of his intent to carry out an attack and did nothing to stop it. The father, mother, two brothers and cousin of the terrorist are all in custody awaiting indictment. Israel's High Court of Justice ruled today that women can supervise rabbinical courts in the country, removing a previous requirement that in order to serve in the position, one had to qualify to be a city rabbi, which excluded women. Deputy Supreme Court President Eliakim Rubenstein wrote in today's ruling that at a time when women occupy a place of honor in a variety of public service positions, it is inconceivable that appropriate representation will not be given in the management of the rabbinical courts. Attorney Batya Kahana Dror, who leads the feminist advocate organization Mavoy Satum and was also one of the petitioners in the case, called the court's decision an historic breakthrough in the field of religion and state. She said, I hope that this determination beyond its practical implementation with regard to the appointment of a director general of the rabbinical courts will in the future become a guiding principle in all matters of religion in the state of Israel. And Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office announced today that it has named a new committee head to help resolve the contentious conversion issue in Israel. Former Justice Minister Moshe Nisim. Earlier this year, Netanyahu put a controversial bill on hold that would give the ultra-Orthodox rabbinate in Israel monopoly over the conversion process in the country, which caused an uproar in the U.S. and Israel. Netanyahu's office said today that Nisim is now tasked with helping to, quote, formulate recommendations on the issue of conversion with broad agreement to strengthen unity among the Jewish people and respect for Israel's heritage. The NBA's international basketball camp happening for the first time in Israel is in full swing this week. Today, some 80 young men and women from Israel's Jewish, Muslim, Druze and Christian communities took part in a training session in Tel Aviv. Basketball Without Borders, as we reported to you last week, is part of the National Basketball Association's push to internationalize the sport. The NBA sent a delegation of managers, coaches, players and Hall of Famers to Israel to lend their skills, including Omri Kaspi, who is Israel's first player in the NBA. Kaspi said this week is also about the power of sport, which we all love, in its ability to unite people from different backgrounds toward a common goal. He told the young players, take the time to forge those bonds that can go beyond the basketball court and make you a better citizen of the world. And turning to some entertainment news, Deadline.com reports that Jewish producer Amy Pascal has acquired film rights to the Mark Sullivan novel Beneath a Scarlet Sky, the true story of an Italian teenager who joined an underground railroad to help Jews escape over the Alps during the Holocaust. Actor Tom Holland, who recently starred in Spider-Man Homecoming, is attached to star. El Al has unveiled its new and improved fleet, the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. The Israeli airline posted a video today showing how the new innovative airplane went from dream to reality. The new plane is about 20 percent more fuel efficient than the 767, which it will replace. It is some six years in the making and will begin its flights from Israel to the U.K. and presumably also to Newark this fall. 
And taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Wednesday, August the 16th. At 7 o'clock, Professor of History at Trinity College, Sam Kassow, talks about Jewish life in occupied Poland from the Scholars Program of Temple Beth El in Stamford. At 8, French Holocaust survivor Joseph Weissman discusses Jewish persecution in France during World War II and anti-Semitism today with Richard Kuttner and Jane Cohen from the Museum of Jewish Heritage. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with author Elizabeth Bettina on the Chaim, and at 10, Rabbi Angela Buchdahl of Central Synagogue, Yehuda Kurtzer of the Shalom Hartman Institute of North America, and Rabbi Dov Lippmann of the WZO talk about Israel diaspora relations with Stephen Baim at the 2017 American Jewish Committee Global Forum. And coming up right after this newscast, it's Thinking Out Loud with Micah Halpern. And that's the JBS News Update for Wednesday, August the 16th, 2017. I'm Tisha Bader.